So welcome back to the Brief Siren. We're on chapter 11, the inner bulwarks and the carronades. In this chapter, we're going to be putting uh, little fixtures inside the bulwarks, the rings, the cleats, the pin rails, the plates for the carronades, and then we'll build the carronades and install them as well. But first thing is first, in editing the last video, I noticed that I forgot to do the bumpkins on the bow. So we'll do those first. I've already made up my two rods sanded them so they're tapered on the Dremel and I just tapered the end of them. The, the, draw the pictures show is like a knob on the end. The plans all show that it's just a tapered section. A section that is just narrower. So I chose to do what the plans show and do it that way. There is a piece of rope that attaches to the end and goes up to something on the masts but no back on it. Uh, it says to make them have 1 16th inch diameter dowel. The kit actually does not have 1 16th, 1 16th inch diameter dowel. But, but if you look at your parts list for the wood dowels, you have the 5 64th dowels, which are a little bit bigger. And it says over here, use as the 1 16th inch. So you're going to use these, you're going to sand them down a little bit. In a, I put them in the Dremel, use the Dremel as kind of a, a drum sander idea, except for putting the part in the Dremel and using sandpaper on the outside, sand it to shape, and then a little file to do the very tip of it. So I'll get those things in first. Um, they glue in between the second and third um, metal rods. And according to the plans, they pretty much come into the joint of the stem and the ship itself. This is a little deceiving. It looks like it goes further back, but I don't think it does. I think it goes right into that joint because it's going to be into the head timber to get as much strength as you could. And the, 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 what, effective, uh, what is effectively a piece that holds rigging. So I'll get those glued in and then you're supposed to put either a piece of paper or a piece of copper tape over the top of it to make the metal bracket and paint it black. So I'm going to get those in and come on back. Okay, got the bumpkins done. They're in, there's little plates on, painted black. Looks, looking good. I would recommend putting these bumpkins in before putting these top bars in place. It'll make it a lot easier. So the next thing is, they say, go ahead and put the template on and mark out where your important features are on the deck. So I've got where all my grates are where the masts are, and I think everything else can come off of that. Um, important thing is going to be, like I said, the masts and the grates, and this bit in the front for the bow sprit. The rest of the bits in the rails and stuff will kind of fall in place as being at the edge of other features. Like the pump is a little bit off of this grate. These bits are a little bit off of these grates. Then on the stern, you can measure off from this grate to get where the vehicle sits and the ship's wheel. This is not a feature that's on the deck. This is the rudder or tiller that comes out and gets put in. So I ignore that. But one thing I would I am also doing here is I'm going through and all these points that are the rings that are in the deck, I'm drilling the holes now. That way I'll know where they're at. I'm not going to put a ring in there right now. That'll come later. I think that's in the next chapter. I'm going to go put the holes in for them right now. That way I already have them in place. Okay, so I'm getting these plates in for the carrot sleds. <clears throat> and I figured all I didn't need to do is put a piece of wood underneath that's about the same size as the um, waterway. That way I have something that to sit on for height. Um, the cannon parts are supposed to be the width of the, the plates above the waterway. Good luck with that. So I'm actually chamfering the edge to fit the waterway before gluing them in. A little bit of super glue. Place them in. Should be centered on the port. And roughly level with the gun port. Once you got them in, they're going to sit there pretty good. Okay, here we are back. I have 
started the port side of the ship with all of this little uh, iron bolts in here. Uh, the, the instructions call them jack stays or the, the parts list. Anyway, on the each side of the bulwark, on the inside, there are 59 different little eye rings. Assuming I counted them correctly. So I have 59 on this side. You do the 59 over here. First thing you need to do, do is those go through and drill a hole for each one. You don't want to go all the way through the hole. You just need to go through this first layer of planking. So just get each one drilled out to a good depth, and then you need to put your eye bolts in. The eye bolts themselves are just little brass eye bolts. Get one out here. If you can see these, with there's little brass eye bolt comes in the kit. You know, mine are blackened. Then you got to cut them off. You don't need that whole length. That whole length to go completely through the side of the hole. You need enough to go into the hole and be deep enough to go through the wood and be able to glue in place. So I got to do 59 over here, and then there's eight on the stern. When you're doing all these, don't forget in the bow. On one side of the, what will eventually be the bow sprit, which is this piece of wood right here, there is another eye bolt down here in the margin plank. Don't forget to put that one in. So it's going to be easier to do it now than it is later. Look in your plans, you'll see where they're at. Um, on the blank, blank sheet, sheet eight, you'll see it there on the starboard side of the, uh, of the bow sprit. So I'm going to go ahead and get these other eye bolts in and then we okay so here I am I'm putting the cleats on inside now to get all the rings in place the cleats themselves are just they're cast Britannic metal this stuff is really soft and bendable and when they form it's got a lot of or when they mold it it's got a lot of flashing stuff on it you can take that flashing off with a little file you scrape it off with an exacto blade or the sandpaper however you want whichever way it's easiest for you and then when i painted them the instructions say they can be red black or wood colored i made mine black that way they can stand out a bit i think the red would be just too much when i painted them i coated them with um style res primer and i coated them with a tamiya german gray and then topped it off with a Vallejo black wash to get this nice, as you see on the cans here, this nice kind of a black color. <clears throat> and then just to keep them scratching up, I put them in place, I coated them with a uh, semi or a, a, a semi gloss polyurethane, which is what I'm coating the ship with. So I get them glued in. Um, there's like four in the back. One at about the third gun port, one between the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh gun ports in the back. Two more up here. And then two at the bridle port around the uh, cat's head. Just glue them in with super glue. That should be strong enough. There shouldn't be any tension on those when I'm done rigging. Okay, the cleats are in. Last is to put this. Um, I don't know what you call it. It's a piece of iron that goes on the, the transom and there will be a, uh, a block tied onto it. This is just formed out of the heavier gauge wire with the kit. And I just bent it around using jeweler's pliers. They're, all they are is the jaws are cone shaped and tapered. So you just put it on, bend it, and get a nice gentle curve rather than a sharp curve. Or sharp angle. You can go ahead and cut it to length each side, drill a couple of holes, and stick it in. As usual for the drilling of the holes, I'm just using a pin vise. Well, I'll need a bigger bit for this. Um, you don't want it too tight, but you don't want it too loose for these uh, for these holes. My set of dermal bits here. They're cheap, but they work. Get one that looks about the right size. 
And then go ahead and drill two holes. This will be centered in the inboard of the transom. Again, do not drill the holes all the way through. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, hating having to do the repairs. So we'll go on the transom here. Above the rudder. And I believe it's about halfway up on these ports here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take the piece, lay it in here. Get it so it's centered for the eyeball. And I mark where I want the holes. I'm making sure this area and this area looks to be about the same. Which is about right there. And you mark where you're going to drill your holes. Go ahead and drill them. Don't go too deep. Get my way. That went through the first layer, which is going to be fine. I can feel it when I hit the gap between layers. Second hole. Be careful when you drill because this wood is really soft and you'll go through it really fast. And then I can just take my piece here. I think it's the pliers rather than the tweezers. Well, these pliers aren't the best because they're actually made for bending photo wedge, so they have no teeth on the inside. And if everything works out. Okay, I have all the cleats in place, all the eyeballs in place. Didn't really show that because you don't need to see me gluing 126 eyeballs in place and 20 cleats. I also got the, now the, uh, wire in the back some place for the the um, block that goes for the jib boom. Next step is to go ahead and do all these um, pin rails. I have an idea of how I'm going to do them. Let's see if it works out. What I plan on doing is I'm going to cut one of the pieces of wood in half that we make them out of and then basically glue the ends together so I have a stack so I can go ahead and mark them out and drill all the holes and then cut them into separate pieces. That way I have matching sets left and right, port and starboard. So the first thing I need to do is cut this in half, one of these in half. And they are about 22, 23, 24, so um, roughly for 22, 11 and a, uh, 11 and a three quarter. I'll just mark it there, close enough to half. These are supposed to be 24 inches. Go ahead and put a little bit of glue on either end. And then glue them together. So with that done, I can come in here and I can say I need one about that long. And it has a hole there, 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 and there. I'll make sure to draw a line to get that straight. Leave myself a little bit of a gap. So I can get a second one here. Okay, with that done. I'm actually going to cut this off over here. Uh -huh. 
You notice when I cut, I'm only cutting one direction, so I'm always cutting against a hard surface. That way I don't get any uh, tear out from the saw. So a little spot there. And the plan I'm using here is the blaying pin plan. You can also use the deck plan from sheet one has the same markings on it. This is one I had that's easy to hold on and use. So everything set up here. Now I'll get my striker glasses on. See what I'm doing. Kind of hoping to be able to set my distance away. And then just slide these things along, get my holes in place. Should give me all my pin rails for the ship and hopefully the holes will be about the right size if not there's extra wood here so i can recut them looks but, be pretty good a little bit on the large side that's fine they'll be glued in and ropes be tied underneath and around in a figure eight pattern to hold them and i'll hold the pins in place actually so they actually never need glued in place so with that actually come through we'll get the first one cut off here one two three four is that one that's five that's this one here so I'm gonna do bell okay So like I said, when I cut these out, I always go one one way with the blade. And try not to cut up my uh, plans either. With that, that's one set of pin rails for the stern of the ship. The rest of them I'll cut out off camera. Both these first ones, cut them out. The saw usually lose a little bit of wood tailings. I just come in and cut them off. Now, since you notice each end is curved a little bit, I'll have to sand that in. Just a little chunk of sandpaper will take care of that. And usually when I do that, I'll lay it flat. And just do sweeping motion get a curve into it doesn't need to be a lot you just don't want that sharp edge or sharp corner I should say Two pin rails. These need to be painted red and glued in place. And these ones here, when they go in, will be between 
these last two gun ports right here. And I believe they go down a bit below the rail like that. Kind of tells me the base of these uh, cleats is a little large. So this cleat you want to suck up to this gun port as much as you can. I'm not really going to worry about it. I think it'll be good. A little tight, but I think it'll be fine. Next thing I think I'll do is I think I'll just have a jig just to figure out how low I need to go. And unfortunately, distance from the top is the width of one of the boards we're using for the pin rail. <clears throat> so I just make a jig out of that, put it on, mark it off, or something, and know where to put the pin rails on. So I'm going to go ahead and make the other rest of them up, paint them red, and glue them in place, and then come on back. Okay, all the pin rails are in place, looking pretty good. Not quite level, this one's a little low or maybe just a little high. Not gonna worry about it. Because at the end of the day, they're gonna be painted red, they're gonna blend in and they're gonna have rigging run to them, laying pins on them and rope pinks on them. The instructions say on these bow ones to cut a specific piece of wood to that shape to fit the curve of the bow, curve of the, the bulwark. I just use the same wood, give a little curve on the back side, this front side here that sticks out into the deck area. Don't worry about curving that unless you're in this in a model show. You will never notice if it's curved or not once you get all the rope pinks on. This one here is going to have four lines tied to it with the rope pinks hanging off. This one's going to have at least three onto it with rope hanks hanging off. There may be more, but it's not shown on this particular blading pin plan. This one here is going to have every hole filled with the rope hanks hanging off. So, you're never going to notice if they're curved or not. The ones back here are all straight anyway, so no need to curve them. So I'm going to go ahead and get them painted, come back and show you the end, and that'll be the end of this chapter. Um, I'm not going to do the care nods and can care nods in this chapter and put them in place, because I'm going to dedicate a video just to the care nods and the cannons and the rigging of those, one or two videos. I think they deserve their own videos. So I'm going to get those painted, come back, and then we'll talk about what's in the next chapter. Okay, so I'm done with doing the uh, pin rails. That's all I'm going to do for chapter 11 right now. I'm going to, like I said previously, I'm going to be holding the Terranods and the Cannons for a set of videos of their own, rather than incorporating one of these, because the Cannons and Terranods are a main detail feature of the deck. I think he deserves her own video. So with that, wraps up chapter 11 for now. Next time we work on chapter 12, which is working on, starting work on the deck furnishings. Primarily the um, gratings that go along the deck. So thank you for watching and I'll see you then.